Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudabuyo playing vanilla Minecraft Snapshot 15W47C of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC Edition. And this is the second in a sequence of videos in which I talk about item elevator design. Uh, in this video, I'm, I'm going to be talking about some relevant properties of item entities, uh, namely item size, item collision, and item stacking. Uh, so first off, uh, items are a quarter of a block high, and we can test this empirically. Um, a, a, uh, an end portal here is um, 13 sixteenths of a block high, which leaves 3 sixteenths of a block of air be, uh, beneath the water. Uh, and an enchantment table is 12 sixteenths of a block high, which leaves 4 sixteenths of a block of air beneath the water. Uh, so an entity with a height that's greater than 3 sixteenths uh, will be pushed by water above the end portal, uh, but an entity with a height that is less than or equal to 4 sixteenths will not be pushed by water above the enchantment table. And this is the case with item entities. So we drop an, an item in here and uh, we can see it flows over the end portal, but then it gets stuck on the enchantment table because there is 4 sixteenths of a block of air between the enchantment table and the water, and uh, the item entity fits completely within that little air bubble. Uh, it doesn't render that way, um, but that, uh, that's basically how the game mechanics work. Uh, okay, so an item entity then is greater than 3 sixteenths uh, of a block, but less than or equal to 4 sixteenths of a block. Um, so I'm basically guessing then that it's a quarter of a block high. Uh, item, uh, item entities are also a quarter of a block wide, and we can also test this empirically. Uh, so an anvil next to an anvil, uh, like I have these two arranged right here, uh, that leaves 4 sixteenths of a block of space in between, uh, and an anvil next to a chest uh, instead leaves 3 sixteenths of a block of space in between. Uh, so an entity with a width that is less than or equal to 4 sixteenths of a block will pass between the anvils, uh, but an entity with a width that's greater than 3 sixteenths of a block will not pass between the anvil and the chest. And we can test uh, this with item entities. There we go. So the, the item uh, passed between the two anvils, but it did not pass uh, between the anvil and the chest. So an item entity is greater than 3 sixteenths, but less than or equal to 4 sixteenths. Uh, so again, I'm guessing that it is a quarter of a block wide. Uh, so items are a quarter of a block high and a quarter of a block wide, and that is actually true for all item entities, even those that uh, appear larger, like uh, swords and bows. Uh, okay, so as for collision, um, items have collision with solid blocks, uh, but they have no collision with most other entities. Um, let me uh, uh, show you with the, the cow here. Um, items do actually don't have any collision with mobs at all. You can see that it just passed uh, right through the cow. Um, and items also have no collision with minecarts, and it just passes straight through the minecart as well. Uh, now. It used to be that an item on the rails would stop a moving minecart. Um, that, that's no longer true, but I don't know which version that changed. So, uh, items also uh, let's see. Uh, items also have no collision with each other. Uh, so if I um, uh, if I press this button, it's going to be a, it's going to drop a diamond directly where that Nether Star is. Uh, and we can see that those two items are allowed to occupy the same space. They don't push each other out of the way, so items don't have any collision uh, then with each other. Uh, as many different stacks of items uh, as you want can occupy the same space. Uh, and that's actually good news because it means that um, the item streams uh, can be batched since large number of items can be processed simultaneously. Uh, boats here are kind of the not notable exception uh, to the no collision rule, and, and that's actually true uh, of boats in Minecraft 1.8 and the new boats in Minecraft 1.9. So an item will actually collide with a boat. You see that the, you saw that the boat stopped it, uh, and um, uh, that's actually true uh, of um, uh, of collisions from the side and from on top. So if I drop a, another star directly on top of the boat. Um, you can see that it uh, kind of bounces up and down there a little bit. Uh, that um, uh, if the that item there that's on the boat that's kind of bouncing up and down, if it bounces into a solid block like a top half slab, uh, it'll actually begin to elevate through the slab. 
Uh, and so I, I think that um, this holds some interesting promise for um, an innovative redstoneless design, uh, but I haven't experimented that much with it yet. Um, the the mm -hmm. trick would be getting a solid block in place while the item is, is above the boat, uh, or getting uh, the item in place while the solid block is above the boat. Uh, so m some interesting potential there, um, but uh, I haven't uh, figured out anything to do exactly with it yet. Uh, all right, as for stacking, uh, there are actually two rules uh, for determining the velocity of a combined stack. Um, so if one stack has more items, the velocity of the combined stack is going to be the velocity of the stack that has more items. Uh, so I'm going to drop an item down at the end of the water stream uh, down there. And uh, before I start this one up, let me block it here. So I'm going to drop one item in the water and another item in the water. Uh, and now uh, the stack in the water has two items, whereas the stack at the end has only one item. So uh, the combined stack then, uh, once I release these items, uh, you saw that it, it acquired the velocity of the stack that was being pushed by the water, since the stack that was being pushed by the water had more items. Uh, now the second rule of stacking is that if both stacks have the same number of items, uh, the velocity of the combined stack is going to be the lesser velocity of the two stacks. Uh, so if I again add an item down at the end, there's one item down there, and I'm going to drop one item in the stream. Uh, both of those stacks are going to have uh, exactly one item. Uh, and so the combined stack then, there we go, uh, combined into uh, two nether stars there. Uh, the combined stack acquired the velocity of the stack at the end here uh, because it had the lesser of the two velocities. Uh, and that's actually bad news because it means that an item that is stuck on bare ice um, is not going to get picked up by, either, uh, by other items coming down the stream. Uh, and worse, other items coming down the stream uh, are also going to lose their velocity and get stuck uh, as they combine with the immobile stack. Uh, so a, a good item elevator design is going to minimize this potentiality. Uh, okay, so that is it then for the uh, relevant properties of item entities. Um, in the next video, I'm going to uh, show how to manipulate items in the stream in order to prepare them for the elevator. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note in the comments, and thanks for watching.